It's a long road to state. Hard work in the summer leads up to grueling two-a-days in August. And if you're one of the elite, the season won't end until December. Are you ready? Football is back in the 409. Hello and welcome to a special edition of X's and O's. It's the 409 Sports Blitz Preview. I'm Ashley Elam, along with Mike Canizales. Well, football season is officially here, and it's time to get down to business. District predictions. Starting with 21-6A, where once again North Shore and Westbrook are expected to settle the district crown. The Mustangs won the 6A Division I state championship last year, while the Bruins came up just one point short in the 6A Division II title game. So here's a look at the 409 Sports picks. North Shore is our unanimous favorite followed by Westbrook, C.E. King, and yes, Beaumont United. We have them in the playoffs. After that, it is a cluster with Channel View in the mix, along with Deer Park and LaPorte, who are tied for six, Baytown Sterling in eighth. Well, just a couple years ago, we had the perfect 5A district with all of our local teams in one place. That changed, though, with realignment. Thanks a lot, UIO. <laughs> that has led Port Arthur Memorial to play in a district full of Houston teams in 9-5A Division I. The Titans are loaded again this year and should go toe-to-toe -to -toe for the district title with New Caney. Things are so tight, in fact, that me and Ashley are disagreeing on this one here. Big shocker. Leading to co-favorites. I'm leading New Caney while Ash has the Titans. The final two playoff spots, though, look to be locks for Kingwood Park and Porter. Houston Austin, Galena Park, Goose Creek Memorial, and Houston Wisdom round up fifth through eighth. Our other 5A district is 12-5A Division II. That's where you'll find mid-county rivals P&G and Needleton, along with Vider. Rashawn Johnson is gone, but the Indians are not. That's right, P&G is our district favorite. The Tribe turns the reins over to the lefty Blake Boast at quarterback and have an experienced offensive line that will be tough to deal with. This year's Mid-County Madness game could be even bigger than normal with Nederland right there on their hills of their arch rival. Their November 8th showdown could settle the district title. After that, we have Barbara Seal and Crosby in the last two playoff spots, but keep an eye on Baytown Lee. The Ganders are a real threat this year. From there, Santa Fe is in at 6, Vider 7, and Dayton 8. Moving along in Class 4A, where the 409 has three districts to keep an eye on, starting with 11 4A Division 1. And let's just say this race will be wide open last year. Splendora went undefeated in district, but were tested by LCM Huffman and Lumberton. You can expect things to be just as tight this year. Once again, me and Ashley, go figure, are completely split <laughs> on the district order, leading to Splendora and Huffman Hargrave being our favorites, while Lumberton and LCM will battle it out for third and fourth. But don't count out Bridge City. Livingston rounds out the district. Moving to Division Two, where it's Jasper and just everybody else in District <laughs> 9 4A. Uh, the Bulldogs are loaded and enter the year ranked number two in the state of Texas. They got a real shot at going to state. The Sooner Rough Riders are a lock for the number two spot in that league. Then things could get interesting. Huntington, Shepard, and Tarkington will battle for the final playoff spots. But sorry, Coach Bass, we have the Longhorns missing out of the postseason. Then over in 10 for a Division II, things are expected to be much more competitive. I'm taking Sealsby while Elam thinks West Orange Stark will win their 10th straight league title. So when the votes tally up, the Mustangs and Tigers are co-favorites with Hampshire Vanette in the third spot. Harden Jefferson is getting better, but they're on the outside looking in. So when you look at that district, that's one of the ones I think that's most interesting right now is when you have West Orange Stark and Sealsby. The two teams, West Orange Stark has owned that series forever, but... Silsby took them down in the playoffs in the rain. There's some excuses from their fan base. Not talking or pointing fingers. <laughs> but some say well if it was good conditions, West Orange Stark would have won that game. Silsby fans, of course, thinking otherwise. So you really like Silsby this year. They, that three had a uh, Russian attack right there. That's what I'm digging the most. And now, granted, you know, all the games are going to be have to one on the line, which West Orange Stark, who I do believe, does have that slight advantage. But with that Russian attack and the quarterback situation in Silsby, I was just over there today. Woo, it's looking tough. And, you know, going back to 6A, we got to talk about the Westbrook Bruins a little more because that team made it all the way to the 6A yep. Division II state championship. And what the guys are going to find out, it's harder to repeat than get there the first time. Everybody's going to put that target on their back. And I'm pulling for the Brook. I am. I think they might be more talented overall, 
but it's going to be really tough to get back to Jerry World. No, it's definitely going to be tough, but how about Beaumont United, though? We both had them sneaking in into the playoffs. I was there earlier this week, you know, talked to Arthur Lewis. You know, no longer do they have to worry about the merger this coming year. It's all about moving forward. I know I spoke to Devin Hunt. His big thing was the brotherhood that this team, you know, was able to come up with during the offseason to move forward. And that's special. And, of course, you know, they're going to be playing for Coach Ed Taylor, uh, such a great man and uh, very emotional times for Beaumont United. So we wish them the very best. And, hey, why not have two 6A teams from Beaumont going to the playoffs? That it could be happen. Great. It could happen. Yeah, it could happen. We have hit our first time out here on the 409 Sports Blitz preview, but don't worry, there is plenty of predictions still to come. Including Class 3A where the Newton Eagles are thinking 3 p That's next on X's and O's. Welcome back to a special edition of X's and O's. It is the 409 Sports Blitz Preview. And we are working our way through district picks. It's time for Class 3A. In Division 1 East Chambers, guess what? They're loaded again. The Buccaneers coming off a state quarterfinal appearance when they were just edged by those pesky zebras from pesky. Grandview. Grandview went on to win the state championship, by the way. You know what? EC should take care of District 12. If the Buccaneers can pull it off, it will mark the first time since 2015 that Woodville is not the district champion. So after East Chambers and Woodville, it will be a war for those final two playoff spots. We have Orangefield and Anahuac. Looking at you, my buddy Greg Neese now out there in Anahuac leading the Panthers, grabbing third and fourth. Babuna and Harden, they are certainly a threat for the postseason. Kirbyville and Warren, as I say, we are not hating on you. We kind of are, though. I mean, kind of, sort of. I'm not hating on you, but yeah. you got some things to work on. <laughs> Hopefully the Wildcats and Warriors get things going. They need to turn some things around to contend. Well, over in 12-3A Division II, can we just give the district championship to Newton already? The two-time defending state champions are loaded. Once again, the real question is, who's going to get second place? We're leaning towards Corrigan Camden. After that, you'll find Anderson, Shiro, and Hemphill. The dark horse this year is, of course, Koontz. The Lions have an extra bounce in their step under first-year head coach Todd Payne. Also, you know, I got to say, I was out at the Lions practice, and it's a new energy out there. He spotted a lot of new things over from Westbrook, and the guys, they believe they can win, and that's a huge step to getting a program turned around. No, I couldn't agree with you more, but how about Newton, though? I mean, that's, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> they're not going to fall off. The Newton machine whatsoever. just keeps rolling, people. I don't care how many people went to D1 schools last year. Big Purple is going to be big and scary. That East Chambers and Woodville. I mean, I don't really think it's a toss-up this year. I mean, they have, I mean, I think that the key difference for that is they're going to be so offensive heavy mm -hmm. over in East Chambers that I don't really see, but no, they're, they're not going to follow up. And you know what Woodville's going to do? They're just going to line it up in the box and run it right down your throat. So it's going to be fun to see a team spread out against one in the box and see who pulls it out on a Friday night. Throw now, your ducks up. <laughs> that's right. In Class 2A, the 409 is home to a pair of districts, including 12-2A Division I. And as it's been the case in recent years, St. Augustine is a monster. The Wolves return 11 offensive starters from a state semifinalist. Deweyville has the best chance of reaching the playoffs out of the 409, but it will not be easy. Behind St. Augustine, we have the Groveton Indians pick second with the Shelbyville Dragons in third. West Sabine is there at the bottom of that in number four after that. Holde Zeta in Deweyville. Sorry, folks, we don't have you in the playoffs this year. <laughs> but we are hoping that one of those teams from our area can slip in and advance to the postseason. Poor guys. Let's head over in 12 to a Division II. Evadale will need to find a way to knock off Grapeland if they want the number one seed entering the playoffs. The Rebels return 13 starters, including 2,000-yard running back Will Farr. Even with Farr, though, we have the Rebels pick second. Behind Grapeland, Love Lady is in at third. Well, we expect Coleman Hill to make the playoffs. The Bulldogs are led by new head coach Cody Day, who left his alma mater in West Harden. Speaking of the Oilers, though, they are fifth with Burkeville sitting at six. That one is definitely going to be an interesting district. By the way, Grapeland, one of my most interesting or favorite mascots, the Sandys. The Sandys. The what, Sandys. Now, what exactly is a Sandy? The Sandy is know. like a little dust devil. That's it? It looks like a little tornado on their helmet. Like but, the Texas tornado? The Texas tornado. But it's, it's just, okay. it's just, yeah. just dust, basically. Or sand. It's sand! The sand man. Thus, that's why they're the Sandys. Now, it makes so much <laughs> sense. Now, we have two 1A districts to watch. 12-1A Division I has only four teams with two advancing to the playoffs. Now, Union Hill out of Gilmer is coming off a regional appearance. They appear to be the favorite again. But watch out for High Island! Ooh. Go Cardinals! The Cards have... Playoff experience and return nearly all of their starters. And by the way, this is six-man football. I don't know if you've actually seen six-man football. You know, I have not, actually. Please tell me about it. What's going it on It is six -man basketball football? on grass. If you can get out to one of these games, say your favorite team is out of town, 
Go watch basketball on grass. It is insane. <laughs> also in that district on the outside looking in are Leverage Chapel and Fruitvale. But yeah, High Island football, bring plenty of mosquito spray. That's number one lesson. If you don't do that, it's going to be a rough night for you out there on the island. But it's really fun football to watch. So we ever happen to do a game of the week from there, we need to bring all the spray. We need to make we sure well we can find a cell tower too. for our backpacks <laughs> because the signal is not the best in High Island. And we need a bubble. I don't even want to go for bug spray. We're just going to get just a bubble. going to go right to it. Well, yeah. We might as well. You think Tegna would pay for that? I think so. Come they on, love Paul. Us, right? Yeah, you got to do something for us, right? <laughs> I'll tell you what, guys. Over in 13-1A Division II, Oakwood is picked first ahead of Trinidad and Apple Springs. And over Chester, things could get interesting with former head, Lamar head coach Ray Woodard leading the Yellow Jackets. While there's optimism for the future, it could be a rough year, though, for the purple and gold. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's kind of crazy to think. Ray Woodard, former Lamar University head coach, Navarro College head coach, now coaching six-man football. But here's the inside track. This is what happened. He's retired in Corgan in his hometown, and he told his wife, I'm only going to go back into coaching if I can get home that same night, and it's right down the road. He thought Chester's the place to go. So good luck to Coach Woodard up there, one of my favorite guys, and I've had a lot of fun with him over the years. And don't worry, we haven't forgot about our private schools. Kelly will once again play in the independent TAPS Division 5, trying to get to a bowl game. The Bulldogs have what it takes to secure their first back-to-back -back winning seasons in 20 years. Now, across town, Legacy Christian is facing some low numbers this year, but that does not mean the Warriors are not a threat for another district title with Corey and Burrell at running back. And how about more six-man football over in Orange? Community Christian, the Lions have a real shot at the playoffs. Baytown Christian is the district favorite there, but CCS will certainly be competitive. Got to love that six-man football. I'm telling you, get out and do it. Now, coming up on X's and O's, we have a special guest. The Beaumont Enterprises' Matt Fay is here to talk about some of the top players in the 409. Welcome back to the 409 Sports Blitz Preview. Joining us from the Beaumont Enterprises, Matt Fay. I am honored. I could just say that. <laughs> He's out here to talk about some of our top players this year. Thanks for coming in. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. Now, tell you what, let's get right to it. Let's talk about the big onion, James Sylvester. Tell us how he's going to make those offenses cry this year. Well, listen, he, he's, he's the, probably about the perfect combination of size and speed from the defensive end position. 6'4", 225 pounds. You're talking about a guy that had no tr trouble getting to the quarterback last year. I mean, we're talking double-digit sacks. Uh, now, I, that might go down this season with the departure of J.J. McGraw. There's going to be a lot of attention on Sylvester this year. But, I mean, this, this guy's committed to TCU. He's got offers from... Pretty much any school he wants to go, he's going to be able to go. He is committed to TCU, though. Uh, I'm really excited to, get to, to watch him play. Uh, you know, this is a guy, like I said, he, he's going to have no trouble getting to the quarterback. And you don't want to get hit by him. No, no, I mean, absolutely not. As the East not. Bernard quarterback found out in that semifinal game. <laughs> right, right. And, and just about every other quarterback and in that <laughs> district right as well. Yes, yes. <laughs> So yeah, Big Onion, still committed to TCU. I know there was a little question mark there, there for was, a second. There was, there was. For a hot minute, there was, there was, there was a question mark. Controversy like in the bunny But um, that was quickly erased. Um, he, he, he made it known that he's sticking with TCU, at least for now. But that's going to be something to keep an eye on as we get closer to signing day. Yeah, you got to remember, you know, it, 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 first of all, these are high school kids. Right, right. They're going to change your mind. Don't go after them on social media, people. Please let them, please. Let them, please. Please let them make their own decision because, <laughs> trust me, all three of us would love to be able to choose from 18 different <laughs> yes. Division One. Don't be that guy who's going after a high school kid on Twitter. That is not a good look. Yeah. Not a good look. <laughs> you know what's a good look, though? What's that? Thaddeus, a.k.a. Thad Johnson. Oh, yes, sir. Westbrook. Yes, sir. That's a good-looking nice wide receiver right yeah. there. 6'1", <laughs> 181, class of two, uh, 2020. Now, this guy's got 19 offers, not right. committed yet, though. Right. Interesting. Uh, we, I raved about Sylvester from the defensive end position. Thad is one of those kids that can do everything from the receiver position. He's got, again, size, speed. Hands are awesome. Uh, now, he... He, he's a guy that his stats, are, I think, are going to go through the roof this year. I he's, agree. He, he's coming off a season, uh, 12 touchdowns, uh, over 1,000 yards, and that was splitting. Breakaway the, speed. And breakaway Look speed. Like and and, and that right was there. splitting uh, receptions with Deontay Simpson, right. who's now at North Texas. Uh, I think 
Thad is really going to benefit from Troy Yeoman at the quarterback position. He's more of a pocket passer. The Raven Elliott, who's graduated uh, at Kilgore now, he was uh, an insane playmaker, was great for Westbrook. Uh, but Yeoman is one of those guys, he's got a big arm, he can zip it in there, and, and Thad, I think, is really going to benefit from that. Look for him to have a big season. Who do you think he's going to go to? What school do you think he's going to pick? I don't know. Pers this is just uh, with absolutely just, no. We, are, we don't know any inside info. <laughs> We're just letting yes, you know. Yes. I would love to see him at Oregon. Quack, quack. I'd love to see that, too. <laughs> now, we're also going to talk about Jalen Garth. He's already committed to the University of mm -hmm, Texas. Mm -hmm. Another guy Hook with him. huge offers. Uh, Put your hook him away. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, PNG is going through a, a new quarterback. They have a new quarterback there. What's a quarterback's best friend? The offensive line. A good offensive line. That's you right. got it. So, uh, from the tackle position, uh, you know, 6'5", pushing 300 pounds. You got it on the screen right there. Um, he's coming off a late season injury last year, so I'm a little bit intrigued to see how, how he responds to that. But all reports out of PNG is that he's looking great once again. Um, you know, should really fortify that offensive line for Boast, who, who's going to, you know, be thrown in the fire here a little bit of PNG, but um, definitely a, a veteran presence. And like you said, hook him. Hook him for your horns. Your horns, Mike. Not, <laughs> not my horns. Speaking of hook em horns. That's How about right. Marcus True. Morris? True. That's called a transition. Look at I that. That's smooth. A couple of them here. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. We're yeah. talking about Marcus Morris, quarterback. This guy's not big on size. So. Right, right. And but he's a water bug. He can get out in the open oh and he's going. Oh, my goodness. Uh, now, the, the three guys that we mentioned before have the big time offers, and, and, you know, everybody knows who those guys are. I really like Marcus Morris at the quarterback position. Maybe there's some perce perception around Southeast Texas that the quarterback position is going to be down a little bit this year, but this guy might be the best of them. He's, he's like you said, he, he can do a bunch of different things. He, he's going to run the ball a lot for the horns, but he also can, can sling it around there as well. You see him running yeah, right there. Yeah, he runs a lot. Yeah, right? and, you, and you know who he reminds me of? Uh, another Hampshire Finette guy, uh, now at Lamar, Kendrick King, who, Absolutely. who, who played quarterback at Hampshire Finette. Uh, now, I'm not, I'm not saying that Marcus Morris is going to make that switch uh, potentially at the college level, but it, it's definitely something to keep an eye on. I could definitely see him doing that, and, and he's got uh, some big-time playmaking abilities. I think this guy might put up the best stats in the area of anybody. He's definitely an explosive guy. Anytime he gets out to that edge, you've got to look out. You mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. And I just love it because when I grew up around here, Hampshire Finette was a force. They were a playoff team year in and year out, yeah. and then they went through some rough, yeah, the <laughs> rough times, <laughs> and it's good to see the horns turning things around and, and getting that you know that winning tradition back out there in Hampshire, and we really think it's going to come down to you know you got to look out for still Liberty and you still got to look right, out for Hampshire right, Finette right. because come on it's Silsby and West everybody Dorn knows the, the two yeah. top teams everybody knows but I, I'll tell you. I, this kid might be the most exciting player in that district, and that sounds crazy to say with the, the Silsby running backs and, and the defense that West Orange Stark has, but he's going to be fun to watch for Hampshire Fanet fans. So there you go. We have a couple of notes to take. Six-man football, mosquito spray, high island. Go watch some six-man football. Mm -hmm. Put your horns away. And also <laughs> Marcus Morris. That was a Hampshire Fanet longhorn sign, I'm sure. Okay, okay. All right. Get out there, watch him on Friday nights because, you know, the big, big schools get the attention. They're right. going to All get that time. attention. You right. know, the Westbrooks, the Uniteds, and Needlelands, PNGs. But, you know, down right there in the 4A level, there's still a lot of good talent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and Jasper as well. You know, the guy, we didn't really talk about them a whole lot. I didn't mention any of their guys. But, you know, a guy at 4A who really sticks out to me is Montavian Hunt, who put up a ton of stats out there. And Jasper, too. He's going to play both ways, but he's going to be a real force at running back as well. And if they would have stayed healthy, they could have been playing in Jerry. Oh, absolutely. And he was one of those guys that got hurt. They were down there three top running backs going into that game. So. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. No, thanks for Thank having me on. Thank you, sir. No problem. Anytime. Appreciate it, Matt. We've hit our last TO. When we return, we're going to tell you about how you can be part of the 409 Sports Blitz. That's coming up next. Welcome back to the 409 Sports Blitz preview. And, you know, it's going to be week one. Ooh, we're yes. We're excited. Here it is. Pumped. And we want you to be part of the show because... You know, it's not the old days. It's not just about highlights over and over. We love Boring. highlights, by the way. Yes, it is. It's a great we love time. Highlights. Don't get me wrong. Yes. And it's not only about post-game reaction. It's about you at home because we want you to be part of the show. That's right. Fans, man, we want everything. So that's why we want you guys, whenever you're out there, whatever you're doing, I don't care if it's pictures of the band, players, whoever, please use the hashtag 409 Sports. Hashtag 409 Sports. Hashtag 409 Sports. Very hashtag. Simple. It's that simple. It's the pound sign for the older demographic. It's older. Pound. Yes. Pound. pound. Yes. 409 pound. Sports. 
<laughs> uh, just to give you an example right here. Okay, so Mike, hey, look. Hey, that's look at, me. That's 409 oh Sports Hashtag. Look at there, right there. He was at a scrim, uh, uh, actually in practice, practice at Port Arthur Memorial. He was there, was able to get a nice picture up close. Guess what? Maybe you're one of those people that are lucky enough to be on the sidelines. Ooh, hello, hello. And you could just take a picture because, you know, they try to run us off out of the, uh, the boxes there on the field. I don't know why they do that. Maybe you can get away with that. Take a picture. Hashtag 4 on Sports. You're going to see it on a Friday night. Look what else you're going to see. If you happen to be that close to the competition, <laughs> which uh, for most of you, you probably won't. But just in case, if you are, once again, please use the hashtag 409 Sports, and we will gladly put it all over our television screens as well. Yeah, it's, and it's also, not only are we going to use this just to show some highlights, because we can't be everywhere at once. No, we, we cannot can't. be. I, we would but, love to be. Believe me, we would love to be But you know everywhere. you're going to be at these games. You want to see your favorite team on there, especially some of the small schools that high maybe, Island. you know, High Island, six-man football. It's all about High Island tonight. If, if you're <laughs> out there and you see something great, get it on video. We're going to post it up there. And also, we're going to use these videos to pick from our Play of the week. Ooh, it's going to be like a fan's choice play of the week. We're going to have our top five plays there every single week of the Blitz, but uh, the 409 Sports Blitz. But we're also going to have a fan's choice, and we're going to reveal it on Tuesdays. Oh, hello. Social Tuesdays, folks. Everybody's going to be involved. Tuesday in Texas. I Tuesday like that. in Texas. Tuesday. Taco in Texas. Tuesday. Oh, Taco Tuesday. That's right. See, here's like another that. video here. Jordan Foster. What's he doing out there? You know, you don't. You don't have to be a reporter here at 12 News to get good footage like this because, like I said, some of you might be sponsors for cheerleaders. You could be an administrator, and you get to see stuff we don't sometimes. See, Even we, tailgating. That's right. Show us some good stuff in the tailgates. We want you to be involved. Can't say this enough. You are part of Southeast Texas. You're part of the 409, so why not be part of the 409, of the 409 Sports Blitz? And family, too. All of it. All of it. We want everything. We want BBQs. We want the tailgate. We want the cheerleaders. We want the players. We want the coaches. We want, the, we want everything. And we're going to have plenty of coverage of the band, too. Right. So don't worry. We're not going to forget about you. <laughs> well, that's going to do it for the special edition of X's and O's, the 409 Sports Blitz special. Good luck to all the teams in the 409. Hey, and let the games begin. <laughs>